What is up, entrepreneurs? Welcome to the Video Simplified Podcast with me, your host, Diana Gladney. And this podcast is dedicated to you, you busy entrepreneur, you helping you simplify and create better videos for your business and just really create a deeper connection with your audience using video. So if that's something up your alley, let's jump right into today's message. What is up, entrepreneurs? Welcome back to the Video Simplified Podcast with me, your hostess with the most, that's Diana Gladney. And I'm doing this one if you're watching the video version of this episode, doing it a little bit different, getting a chance to just kind of sit back here. Um, obviously doing it for multiple reasons. If you're watching this, then you'll see that I have my USB, one of my USB microphones connected, uh, and that's running to my phone. And then I'm also picking up the uh, audio for the camera just for another video that I'm going to be sharing with you very soon on how you can get pro level audio on your mobile device. Um, so if you want to do mobile podcasting or something like that, you can. For me, I have my camera and I don't have the adapter that I need at this moment of recording to connect it in to do all the things and stuff like that uh, to go straight into the camera but that would be another way but then two um, you can really just connect via USB from your USB and XLR microphone like what you're hearing this on right now which is the Audio Technica ATR 2100 or the microphone you usually see uh, and most of the time hear me speak from which is the Samson Q2U which is attached to my desk but I'm just kind of sitting back here chilling out because this for me if there is a such thing as a audio type vlog or something like that or more, uh, probably what, you know, you'd hear Gary V's audio experience or something like that. Kind of more what this is going to be. Usually I try to be super intentional with the topics that I'm coming to uh, the channel with or that I'm coming to the podcast with uh, and things like that. Is it something that's more for the audience that's already here? Or is it something that's really going to help that new entrepreneur um, that's just being introduced to my content and things like that? And, you know, again, just being super intentional uh, about uh, what type of content I find what, that I think would be most helpful. But I just really want to uh, get a chance to sit back, relax um, and have a conversation conversation with you uh, around a couple different things, because. One of the things I was thinking about uh, for this week's episode revolves around um, just being able to, one, um, relax and reprocess and take time for uh, relaxation, refocusing and just all the different things. And so um, something I've been studying recently more is on personality types. And so that would be the Myers-Briggs assessment like the 16 variations for the personality types. It doesn't mean like schizophrenia type stuff, but uh, more or less, like if you hear um, people talk about Enneagrams, that's another one. There are different variations, but I think the Enneagram um, and I think that's nine on the Enneagram or seven, maybe it goes, it's anywhere from seven to nine on the Enneagram, I believe. I think it's nine. <laughs> and then um, as far as the Myers-Briggs assessment, it basically has 16 variations of your personality because they didn't feel like, I guess, you know, whatever is available uh, or was available already. It just kind of like it, it grouped too many people together with a lot of things like like all introverts are not created equally and all extroverts are not created equally. And so, um, for example, the Enneagram, I'd be considered in the fours uh, category. I mean, you can probably look that up and research that however you want to. And then for the Myers-Briggs assessment, which I think is, is more refined, uh, it'll pinpoint a lot more things that are more true of your personality type. Um, for sure, it's been like spot on for me exactly, um, more so than like the Enneagrams per se. But the Enneagrams also brings a lot of revelation and light to that. I mentioned that because even though uh, when it comes to creating video content topics and things like that, it's important to sit sit down and and one, based on how you learn, how you retain information and how you receive information and how you learn best uh, will dictate how you're able to produce best. And so for me, that may mean sitting for a really long time, not just like me sitting back here and literally not doing anything, but in my down times when maybe I'm eating or maybe uh, before I go to sleep, I may not watch anything or I may not listen to anything or in the mornings, um, just times that or just even driving so driving or whatever. I'm always super intentional, intentional about uh, where I'm focusing my energy and my efforts and my time so that I can refocus and refine my thoughts and my thinking 
so that when I have to show up in something of a more public like setting or whatever, I'm able to deliver the best version of myself. And so knowing how I learn and what things are more true like me, for example, on the uh, 16 personalities or the Myers-Briggs assessment, I am what's considered an INTJ female, obviously being a woman. So the INTJ personality types, like it's, it'll either start with the first letter being an E or an I, uh, depending on if you're introverted or extroverted. So despite as many videos, or if even if for some of you guys, you've met me uh, in person, or maybe we've done like a chat or something like that. It could be, I even know, uh, through, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Instagram, like FaceTime almost kind of, um, in private messengers. So it's like, one to one sometimes, or if you've like met me at Grow With Video Live or something like that, or anywhere else, then it may not seem like I'm introverted. It's like I'm introverted with some extroverted tendencies, just because of it has taken years to kind of develop those. Simply because I'd more so prefer to be off to myself, doing my own thing in my own world, figuring out my own thoughts, and having a, an amazing time. Literally, probably to anybody else doing nothing or boring things. Um, and taking that time to sit back and to think and to refocus and again, refine my own thoughts and what is going to best help me produce content based on thinking from a perspective or a place that I used to be in or something like when I was in this position, just searching for video content, what would I have found most helpful? And then thinking through that and then being able to produce and show up that content or being a little bit more lax uh, and give myself a break or if I just need to get out of a creative what rut because I'm spending too much time in thinking. But yeah, to somebody else that may, things that I may do that may seem seemingly boring to somebody else is things that recharge me. And so I say that because when we are kind of kind of creating our YouTube channels and like, or even trying to think of the framing or the mentality or just the position, what do I want my channel to be like? Um, that's things that like, it's a, that production, that producing, that putting out or whatever. If you're somebody like me that is more introverted, even though it's not physically being around it, it, people, it's still a lot to show up for consistently um, and, can, and just being able to do that consistently over time. And so it takes a lot to do that or to even to show and to share more of your true personality when you're on camera. So I say all that to say, like, depending on where you are, whether it's for like the Enneagram or like your uh, Myers-Briggs assessments for the 16 personalities. And if you want to figure out what those are for the 16 personalities, you go to uh, 16 or 16 personalities.com. And like I said, mine was extremely accurate. Like when I shared it with my mom, she laughed, I almost fell out the chair laughing just for how accurate it was because she's like, you've literally been like that since you were a kid. So um, being able to take into consideration how you learn and things like that, that I, I, I absolutely will just like impact your content creation process and the channels that you want to create. Cause I, I had to think about um, early on, like once I defined and decided more or less that not even really defined, but when I decided that I wanted to have a YouTube channel for the sake of having a YouTube channel, I had to figure out like what kind of a channel is this going to be? What kind of a, um, just like, like, do you want a business insiders type channel where Everything is like, it's never, there's no such thing as vlogs on here. There's no real, like, it's always like super well produced, nothing but tips, trainings, tutorials, and so forth. There's never any, anything extra. It's a very specific and niche channel. So that person never, ever uh, will get anything really different per se than what they've come uh, to know and love. And you know, the reason why they subscribed. And then you have channels that are just more honestly like vlog style channels more like personalities only um, and just showing and sharing that person's life their experiences and you'll get value out of it by just simply being able to get value out of connecting with them the same way you would with um, any other kind of relationships and so knowing that uh, <clears throat> excuse me and so knowing that um, I wanted like both but then too like based on 
my kind of personality and you know what that what that would mean for me it's like I get I know for me um psychologically or just yeah just more or less like, like psychologically it can get boring only doing you know trainings tips tutorials type stuff never ever getting to really show and share anything it's for some people that could be like a complete turnoff because they only want you to stick in this vein of content. They only want you to stick in this vein of things. So people like even like uh, in working with certain clients or you, ha- you know, hop on certain live streams or different trainings or whatever. It's always somebody that's asking, I want to do something different. I'm used to being like they only know this one thing. What is going to happen when I introduce this new thing or I've been trying to introduce new stuff? It's not really going well. Should I start a second channel? So most of the time, When somebody starts uh, having the conversation around should they start a second channel, it starts being like, well, it's just more or less it could be from boredom, you know, a change in direction or whatever. But I like that. I don't want to leave the success that I've built and developed and now have to reframe and switch directions and start doing something different. Uh, And then the people that were there that were supporting this one thing, they want to leave because they don't they aren't on board with the new thing. And so. Especially if it's like a completely 360, if I was doing vegan health tip videos and then all of a sudden um, I decide I want to talk about auto mechanics. Obviously, that's a completely different niche. But if people are interested in you per se, then they'll kind of follow you no matter what, because maybe you talked about that stuff anyway. Um, But then, too. If you have a defined specific channel, that's all about the health tips, this now or whatever. It's like, yeah, it makes sense to change. But. If you switch diets and you went from, again, still uh, from one side of the spectrum to the other and from like veganism to like the carnivore diet, then it's just like, well, crap, are people still going to follow me? This is completely against blah, blah, blah. And so now you kind of created this like civil war, so to speak, in your own community. And so I think about that kind of stuff, especially as like I'm taking on video marketing clients and even like just defining my own channel and things that I want to produce. And things that I don't want to produce. I know there is have, there was an opportunity once I, cause I always like my, my uh, case study content would be always like referencing, you know, certain elements of the Canon M50 for video series. And so for me, there's, a, there's an opportunity, especially when that, that series was hitting really well, especially um, after I had the whole vlogmas debacle where my camera broke, got to sit in that and was able to just kind of share around that still was kind of hitting on that, but I wanted the freedom to not just feel like I only have to share tips, tutorials, and things on this one thing. You know, I want this other thing too, um, so that I can have both. And so that's not always easy, an easy decision. And so like as as entrepreneurs, we will think about um, what do I want? What do I want my channel to be? And then trying to stay true to that. Um, And then, but then too, when you want to change, when you wanted to do something different, and we probably have all experienced this where, you are following somebody's channel, they're constantly like, man, I wish they would just make more of blah, 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 and stop with this other stuff, because I don't really care about that. Or you see it, and it's just like, after so many times, you see too many of the things that you don't want, even like me uploading these video podcasts, it's just like, if it's too much of the wrong things that you don't want, you just like, oh, I'm done with this, unsubscribe, which is fine, because you want those that want to be there, but then you're also trying to like account for attrition and things like that with anything, any new thing that you're doing. And so I think it's important as entrepreneurs that as we, one, if you're just getting started, and then as we define what channels, what we want our channels to be moving forward, especially with it being February, it's just the second month of the year. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of creation and a lot of the majority of the year still available to us. What do we want to do with it? And what do we want our content to be? And how is that that focus, that shift in how we're learning, what we need, how much we can produce and put out and how much we need for ourselves to develop those ideas. And then like to show up and share our message. And so, um, I thought about this for whatever reason, it's something I I know I wanted to talk about, but it was just like really on my heart to share. Like, I think you can, obviously you can do both. You can just have, or the three variations, one being tips, tutorial, education, whatever, only content, vlog style stuff as well incorporated or sprinkled sprinkled in so a half and half or hybrid style channel or you can be the third one which could be like just a vlog not necessarily vlog like hey I'm going to the restaurant and hey I'm going like but around your life and the things that you're interested in um, just sharing your experiences uh, and whatever value that that may be for example um, for all the different things that have been encompassed or included in my life I could have 
um, of a vlog style channel just for me doing my, my whole uh, natural hair experience. So I could say from, you know, day one and trace back to, you know, what it was February 1, 2019 when I shaved my hair and the why and, the, and what the growth is like. And when, the, you know, texture transition or having to get it shaved a couple times and just keeping um, a fade for a while until the natural hair is able to kind of come through that processed hair or root system and just kind of push through and share that. And then it's just like, oh, I like this or I don't like that. Or even like now it's the wintertime. I always wear um, hats in the wintertime regardless. Uh, but it's just like, yeah, it's like instead of froze, it's like I want to wear this. Like so I could do variations of whatever and share that literally on its own channel. I could also create a channel around uh, my experience in my journey with endometriosis and what that's been like. And so what how the difficulties of working a job um, and, and then starting a, a business part time and on the side what that experience is like physically, um, what that requires of me. Uh, and then also, uh, what that's been like now, um, after, you know, quitting corporate America and how, you know, life has been easier being able to one, not have to go out, um, in harsh temperatures that affect my body differently. Um, and being able to take time to rest and relax. And like, even now for me to sit back here, instead of sitting at my chair, even though I have like a cushion that I ordered for it and everything, um, to kind of deal with that and help with that. But I can come and do a podcast back here instead of doing it over there, which is more comfortable physically for me. Uh, so I could talk and do a channel about that. Or I could have Entree Woman TV, which is why it's not called, um, you know, the video simplified channel, you know, which it very well could be. And then I delete all the vlogs, get rid of all of the any things that have nothing to do with video and just only leave it about cameras and video content creation. It could be that channel for me personally. I had to make the decision that, um, especially like I, I didn't start the channel and I talked about this on the interview with, uh, Alex Mi minor, um, for that one, the 1000 miles podcast. Um, and I was sharing how, like when I created quote unquote, set up the channel, I did not set it up to be a YouTube channel. I literally just set it up to host my videos, to share on my website about, you know, doing small business consulting and tips like that. And then as my um, ideal client changed and, you know, who I wanted to reach and what I want to connect with, I'm like, yeah, I want to go a few years deeper into the journey with the, an entrepreneur a little bit further along so that I can introduce them. And they're in a place where they're ready to create video stuff. It's not super overwhelming for them um, because they're not also trying to start their business and start video at the same time, which can be um, a bit more stressful. And then to me personally, wanting to switch directions and being more interested in video and that kind of passion developing for itself. So it's like, uh, so things change. It just shifted. And then two, the videos were performing better uh, on the channel from just only small business tips to whatever. So both could work, but it's just like, I don't want to talk about that stuff anymore. I don't want to more heavily focus on those things anymore. So it's like, can I sprinkle those, those things in between and those tips in between? Absolutely. But I didn't want to only focus on those things. So it's like, then just like, you know what, I'm okay with letting go of only uh, focusing on content like that and more heavily and almost, almost only focusing on video centric content. Uh, and that's the thing. It's like, so when you're creating your own YouTube channel, or you're deciding which one to create, or maybe you want to create a new one. It's like, I kind of feel like for most people, they have to figure out those lanes between those three lanes of content. What do you want? Do you want the more tips, tutorials, only based style content? Do you want the hybrid stuff? Like where you can do some vlog and incorporate some blog style stuff, or just more or less freedom in creation style content. And then you also have tip tutorials based on whatever your specific niche and thing is. Um, and then number three, do you want just the more personality based content that's more like vlog focused uh, only type stuff, sharing your life experiences in that thing? So for me, I wanted a hybrid channel, which would be number two in this one, two, three type type framework, so to speak. So, uh, for me, I definitely wanted a hybrid channel because it would be, it would be super boring to me as the creator to just only talk about those things. And then I feel locked and boxed in to whatever. And that doesn't suit my personality type because I'm always exploring my own ideas. I'm taking time away to focus and think about myself. And then physically any times that I would not be really physically up 
to creating videos at that time also I would spend just only focusing when I can my mental energies towards just thinking what's next what do I want to create next so that when I have the physical strength to do it then I show up and do it um and and but then too I didn't like I said I didn't want to feel like I was locked and boxed into only that that I could do other stuff too so for me that's why it's called Entree Woman TV. It's not so much so about um, an entre- some entrepreneurial woman out in the world. It's, it's really about my entrepreneurial journey as a woman and helping you share and share, sh- help you show and share your message through the video content strategies that I've been able to discover, uncover, and just simplify in a way so that you can go out and do those things also. So I didn't just only want to create a channel that I'm only stuck doing more and more specific, detailed, you know, like very crafty videos like the M50 series, like trainings and tutorials, like like I'm I'm stuck doing that kind of stuff only. Um, But I wanted to, you know, have the ability to throw up stuff like this on the channel um, as well. So I can repurpose that content um, to like my Instagram, my Instagram page, LinkedIn and whatever else that also contribute to the business. So uh, when you're creating your own channel um, or deciding what kind of a channel that you want, I think those are the three main categories that you have to create and and all have their strengths and their weaknesses. So if I had to go and do like a simple breakdown for that, the number one category where you only have, you know, very specific refined niche content, I think those tend to, to do the best because the person never has to worry about anything new and in, being introduced that is very different than the reason why they subscribe. I think the second category, um, those tend to do well, but this, the progress may be slower or the growth may be slower because again, you have some things of why somebody subscribed that's similar to number one. So that person is like when this stuff shows up, because maybe you connect with that person or you like with the way they teach or whatever, uh, reasons why you like that person, you say, well, Dak, uh, I just have to wait until whenever that, uh, that content that I really like, that's similar to, you know, the number one category shows up. And then anytime the vlog stuff comes, it's just like, I ain't really interested in that or vice versa. Um, and so the downsides to that is you may have two different types of groups that show up in your community where the people that are just waiting for stuff from, you know, categories that are more like number one and the people that are waiting for stuff that's more like categories number three, uh, which is the vlog style only content. And then so, uh, so, so the, that's like, so I said like the downside, but the upside also is that both variations are there. I've not found for me, um, personally where I've ever subscribed to somebody only for the training stuff, as much as I value logic and reasoning and information and like studying and just like knowledge and wisdom, as much as I value that stuff, once I have determined that you're somebody I want to learn a specific thing from or some things from, or I get value in the way that you show and share a message or teach things, then it's like, I want to now know more in my wisdom thing. It's like, I want to know more about that person. You know what I'm saying? So that I can not only just see the tips to tour, but more or less maybe see it in action uh, in certain respects or, you know, dig into the mindset or the thought process of that person. So, for example, even like for old stuff, I mean, like really old stuff. So you think about uh, Napoleon Hill and thinking real rich and I have like a ton of his variations of books, the audio books, different versions of the audio books from different perspectives, even like. Um, so, for example, um, dang, storm, you fail. So again, those that are watching the video version, you saw one of the storms take a tumble, but like, so there's this Think and Grow Rich, uh, a black choice uh, by Dennis Kimbrough and Napoleon Hill. And so Think and Grow Rich originally in general is by Napoleon Hill, but this variation by Dennis Kimbrough is an extremely valuable uh, concept. So it's just like, and, and variation of the book. And so I would never know about this book if I didn't know about the original book and so if I didn't have an interest in the original thought process and and, and thought frameworks of Napoleon Hill and the original Think and Grow book Think and Grow Rich book and how that variation translated into the law of success and 16 lessons by Napoleon Hill and how you know just like each book led to another book led to another book and I'm like man I really want to get into the thought process of this man like so much so, <laughs> if I continue to re- reach back 
into some of these other ones. Let's see here. Because I'm pulling from my bookshelf. I'm trying to see if it's over here. But I'm probably going to move on for this. Because this is a such a rabbit hole. That <laughs> it literally could continue for forever. But I'm going to leave it there. Because I'm not. If I if I do. It's just like I'm going to be stuck. But I'll, I'll pull this one since I see it. Um, which is a, another Napoleon Hill book. And again for those that are listening. Not watching the video version. I um. I'm just referencing things on this first shelf that's next to this green uh, sofa back here. So the Master Key to Riches, also by Napoleon Hill. And so every variation of his book, of variations of Think and Grow Rich, not even variations of it, um, just like all kinds of stuff. Another one, um, you can you can work your own miracles, also by Napoleon Hill. Um, and he has another uh, book, Grow Grow Rich with Peace of Mind. And so it just like basically it's just the point is that Every book led to another book, and for as old as uh, N Napoleon Hill is in the the thought leader world, and, and and in the personal development world, and just like all kinds of stuff, and all of these books, I if it wasn't for some of that category one style content being a book, obviously, if Napoleon Hill, let me tell you, if you, Napoleon Hill had a YouTube channel, it'd be on like Donkey Kong. Do you hear me? But he has content that is video, like it's extremely powerful. So where this applies to us is because he not only had the Think and Grow Riches books of the world, the Master Key to Riches books of the world, this very speci specific number one style content. He also had stuff that's, I say vlog, again, it's not like, hey, look at my food on my plate at the restaurant that has nothing to do with anything. But he also shared in his experiences with uh, books like Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, where he it's more of that vlog style, my experiences and my thoughts. And he gets the chance to blend and mix some of that in. But again, a, a book like The Law of Success and 16 Lessons is a different type of book by Napoleon Hill. He can't like he's giving you just I don't even want to say meat because vlog style content is just a different type of meat. Um, so it's like you, I didn't just want only the tips. I'm like, man, I really want to get into psychology, the thought process where he was and where, you know, like I want to get into the, to know more now about this person. And so, um, as I begin to learn more about Napoleon Hill, then I it, like, that's how I got into any of the other books. So every book that I have like around each other, it's not just like based on size on my bookshelf. It's like based on like. A framework and a thought process like it's it's pretty intentional like that's one thing about me personally when I move the books get packed up first before my clothes before any tech gear before any anything the books come first if every like if they like <laughs> I remember they always say well you can replace anything I'm like is there some place that like some some government place where for every one thing that I buy like this storm action figure was bought are they keeping track of that and putting one away somewhere for me? I literally asked that question as a kid. And they were like, no, you can just buy it again. I was like, no, that don't work. Because once stuff gets too old, they're not manufacturing it anymore. This is an elementary school me. So, again, INTJ female. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, and so I'm like, the books would absolutely be the reason why, you know what I'm saying? It's just like I get caught up in an emergency situation because I'm like, what things are most important? Should I grab first? Let's put these all on the shelf together. Not that you couldn't replace it, but whatever. You know, again, but that's just me. But <laughs> I say all that to say, like, again, I know not just not just for me only, but for other people as well. And probably you would like that with anybody else that certain people it's just like, man, I really like their makeup line or man, I really like, you know, their clothing line. And then you get to know more about that person. It's like, man, I never knew that's fascinating. And then you want to know more about them. So again, the, the number one style content leads into the number three content, which is why I wanted a hybrid because I personally enjoy creating both. And it's but it spoke to me as an entrepreneur as well, because I got it. I got the opportunity to. And just, I thought for me, it's an advantage to when I'm ready to know more about this person, when it comes to like me being out of the lane one. And I'm like, man, I really would love to see how they're doing what they're doing. Or I really love to see X, Y, and Z. Then that number three content style content becomes more valuable to that person. And so knowing you, knowing your personality, 
uh, and, and just not even like the specific personality types, which it really helps to define and learn more about yourself. Um, I'm steadily, you know, constantly focusing on that more heavily, especially this year, um, because it helps me in creating content surprisingly enough because it's like based on how I learn how can I use myself and my quirks and my different things to the advantage of the person on the other side it still always goes back to the them first premise how can I take what I'm doing and help it or how can I take something about me or some area of me and have it really be focused towards the helping them first and the them is who your audience is your ideal customer client or whomever that avatar person and so um, I think it's beneficial. I always encourage and, and even if you do create a channel that's more number one focus style content, then I would say in your, for example, this is where stuff like, and I've even considered this, really getting rid of all the vlog style stuff on the channel per se, and just only doing that through something like an Instagram. But for me also, the longevity of evergreen content being on YouTube is very vastly different because you don't really go through people's Instagram profiles and their their feeds like that for real. You don't continue to search and look through stuff like that constantly. So uh, you'll look through a little bit and you're like, okay, like them and then follow. But excuse me. But you're not sitting there just like, oh, um, let me you know dig through and just like binge their content on, on Instagram. So that's where the difference uh, was made for me personally. So I wanted a a number two style channel, a hybrid style channel. But I think, again, as entrepreneurs, um, taking into account how you learn what you need as a as a person for your personality type, um, how you can deliver, which translates into how you can show up and share best, how you can deliver best and use your quirks and your personality to your benefit. If you are a more outgoing personality, you have a bigger circle where you can maybe have more panels and stuff like that. You can use that kind of stuff to your benefit to the the person on the other end because it's just tying in to who you are to delivering that content. So it can be a number one style content channel to tips, tutorial, education based primarily. And then you're but you're using your personality, personal personality types and deli- and being able to help that contribute to the, to your style content. So, um, but that's where I, I'm going to leave it, uh, for today's episode. Again, I just wanted to take time, uh, refocus. I said more vlog style is as in not ha- having to be like, Oh, tip number one, two, three, whatever for this episode. Um, but then to just like, again, dialogue, have a conversation around that, um, around the topic of deciding what kind of a YouTube channel you want to create because based on the type of videos that you'll create because I can put thought into a story or Instagram stories or even create a video um, post around that but I'm limited to 10 minutes whereas I can see now the raw recording of this uh, is up to 33 minutes right now so that'd probably be like a 30 minute episode but it's or somewhere there about pretty close because it's a podcast so it's, it's very lightly edited uh, but you know, you can't do this kind of stuff on Instagram. You could do a live stream, but you can't do this. So for those, even if it's a, a lower amount, which it often is, creating that um, opportunity for you to be able to have your diehard fans, your diehard community members, you know, really be able to engage but then to those later on that as they discover you, be able to have that opportunity to grow with you. I think... Um, type two style channels um, can be beneficial. You can, like I said, you split that up through whatever social platforms or whatever. But for me personally, um, even as introverted as I am, um, I still wanted a number two style channel. I didn't want to be stuck. And that's what, that's what a a number one style channel felt like to me. It felt like restriction Um, and, and number three as well. So uh, a number one, tips, tutorial, trainings type stuff, or number three, vlog only type stuff, never any really deep trainings or learnings type stuff. Both of those felt like boxes to me. I didn't want to be in. So I wanted more freedom, which is why I, I personally chose a, a, a type two style uh, channel. So I think for, if you're just get, for an, any entrepreneurs, if you're just getting started creating video content and you're wanting to create a channel or you have one and maybe you're creating another one, um, I think it's important to like really think through some of the things that we've talked about and shared um, on today's episode to just find kind of like figure out like what kind of a channel do you want? 
do you want the number one tips tutorial trainings only type stuff do you want a number two that's more of a hybrid between a one and three uh, which is to tr training education stuff and some vlog personality more light light content um, or do you just want a number three where you can just show and share your life experiences and yeah you can always still provide value through that but it's not like a heavy education based channel so as entrepreneurs you kind of have to find that thing it's not always a number one it's not always a number two for a lot of people um so yeah that's, that's what i'm gonna leave for today's uh, episode so if you enjoyed what you heard what you saw if any of you watching this video version uh, of the podcast uh, be sure to go to diana.link forward slash podcast and that'll get you to uh, the episode, the podcast feed in general, where on Mondays is the video simplified podcast. Um, so guaranteed video content style uh, like this video centric topics. And then Tuesday through Saturday. Now we've incorporated the Instagram live show uh, that's on Instagram only. That's at Diana Gladney um, and at 630 a.m. Central Standard Time. So it's just really uh, the Entree Chats daily morning show being revived and then added to the uh, podcast feed there. So um, but yeah, that's that's where I'm going to leave it. So uh, again, make sure you leave a rating and review if you've never done that before which would be nearly all of you. <laughs> so leave a rating or review uh, in your favorite podcast player. Um, and with that, my friends, live with passion. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Video Simplified Podcast, which if you're listening to this in the audio version, which will be tomorrow when we start our Entree Chats daily morning show um, on Instagram and then the audio version um, at diana.link forward slash podcast. But with that, my friends, live with passion. I'll see you on the next episode of the Video Simplified Podcast. Take care. Thanks for checking out today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed the content that you heard. And if you did, make sure you leave a rating or review in your favorite podcast player. And I do read and check all of those. So it'd be greatly appreciated. But more than that, leave a message. Go to anchor.fm forward slash Diana Gladney and let me know your thoughts. If you want it published, we can do that. If not, I'll listen to it and just hold it close and near and dear to my heart. But otherwise, guys, make sure you subscribe to Entree Woman TV if you want more video tips and things like such as. But otherwise, guys, I will see you on the next episode on the Video Simplified Podcast. Take care and as always, live with passion.